say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up a name to his brother in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak to him. But if he stands firm and says, I don't want to take her. Then his brother's wife shall come to him in the presence of the elders, remove his sandal from his foot, spit in his face, and answer, say, so shall it be done to the man who will not build up his brother's house, and his name shall be called in Israel, here it is, the house of him who had his sandal removed. Ooh. So you don't want to uh, marry your uh, brother's wife, huh? No, I don't. Call the elders. Now, why did they call the elders? Listen, if she is not cared for by the family, it's the government, it's the state, it's the church, it's the synagogue that's going to have to pick up in this task. How can you not be responsible? This is your brother's wife. You know what? This is shameful. This is embarrassing. She has the right to, in front of the elders, approach you, take your shoe off your foot, spit in your face, and you live with the shame and guilt from that day forward. Shame and guilt from that day forward. Look at a little spit on his face and no shoe. Oh, no, no, no. She's taking the shoe off his foot because in those days, shoes were a very, very protective very, very valuable, keep you from potholes and pitfalls. Oh, keep you from stumbling and stubbing. You see, shoes were very, very important. She's taking the shoe off his foot, basically calling down a curse from God, saying, you wouldn't protect me? From this day, you're not protected, and let me shame you with spit in your face. Take one from the bottom of her belly, right on his face. You see, now, now, here's the crazy thing about this. Some of you seemed more bothered by that expression than you did his decision not to provide for his brother's wife. When I said, and out from her belly, she spits in it, oh, that's gross. Let me tell you what God thinks is more gross. Family not taking care of family. That's a lot more gross. That's a lot more shameful. That's a lot more sick. We have a tendency to look on at something that's a physical expression of somebody's disdain or disgust and go, that's really terrible. What did the guy do that cost him his life? He didn't care about his family. Well, it's even more sad than that. You see, Judah decides to try and spare his son. And, and please come back to Genesis 38 and see exactly what I'm saying. He says in verse 11, Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow in your father's house till my son Sheila is grown. For he said, lest he also die like his brothers. In other words, I don't know what you're feeding, what you fed my first two sons, but this, he's not going to eat the same food. I'm going to spare him. Now, now stay with me on the thought. He thinks he's sparing his son. Is he sparing his son? Well, he must be fearful for something because he chooses that Sheila will not marry Tamar. He said, it's not going to happen. Now, here's what's interesting, and put your thinking caps on for this connection. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 21, Sheila's name shows up again. He marries a different woman, and they become, listen to this, according to the scriptures, workers of linen. Another translation says, sellers of linen. So he sells sheets for a living. Sheila does. Sheila, the sheet seller. <laughs> but think it through. Tamar, she ends up being the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus Christ. Dad thinks he's sparing his son and he becomes a sheet seller. But he could have been a soul saver had he stayed in the family of faith. Now, here's my hope. Some of you are the kind of people who would look on at a man in ministry and say, well, that's fine for you, Bob, and I'm sure all the ministers who are here are happy with their life, but I want something more for my kids, so I'm not going to have them marry this faith fact and see them continue on this faith path. I have something in my, and I'm thinking, you know what? The thing you think you're sparing your son from could actually be a lot more tragic than the thing that you actually save him from. And again, it's the second point. If you're a note taker, you'll consider it with me. 
The pursuit for more can end with less outside of God's economy. You say, Bob, that was your first point. <laughs> Listen, it's also my second point, and I'll tell you ahead of time, it's also my third point. <laughs> this point is so apparent in the text. I said, I can't come up with a third or a second point. And God said, say the same one three times. So I'm being obedient. It's the same point throughout the whole Bible study. The pursuit for more can end in less outside of God's economy. He says, I want more for my son. And he ends up getting less because it was outside of God's economy. First for himself and now for his kid. Does it get worse than that? Yeah. Go back with me. Genesis chapter 38, verse 12. Now in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted. He went up to his sheep shears at Timnah, he and his friend Hira the Adullamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear sheep. So she took off her widow's garments, covered herself in a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which was on the way to Timnah. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot because she had covered her face. Then he turned by her way and said, uh, please, let me come into you. And most of you know what that means. <laughs> For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. So she said, what will you give me that you may come into me? And he said, well, I'll send you a young goat from the flock. So she said, will you give me some pledge until you send it? Uh, then he said, well, what pledge will I give you? She said, your signet and cord and your staff that's in your hand. And he gave them to her. And he went into her and she conceived by him. She arose, went away, laid aside her veil and put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judah sent the young goat by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the widow's hand. But he didn't find her. And then he asked the men of the place, saying, where's the harlot who was opened by the roadside? And they said, there was no harlot in this place. So he returned to Judah and said, I can't find her also. The men of the place said there was no harlot in this place. Then Judah said, let not and take him for herself, lest we be shamed. For I sent her the young goat, and you've not found her. Pause right there your attention, please. Some of you are thinking right now, is this the Bible? <laughs> this is not the Bible. This is a script to some kind of movie that my kids can't see and I shouldn't watch. That's what this is. What in the world is God telling us? Can I submit? He's reminding us once again that he doesn't candy coat his characters. That nobody is. If you think I'm sinless and pure, you're sadly mistaken. <laughs> Borderline delusional. I sin. Not as much as you, but I sin. <laughs> but you see the raw, rude reality of life right here. And in, in the key, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Judah is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. And you're thinking, how in the... Now, did he just have sex with his daughter-in-law? And it's from that we're going to get Jesus? Is he allowed to do that? <laughs> yeah, but please note, before we consider the grace of God, the cost of this grace. What's that? The price that Judah pays. He says goodbye to his signet ring, his cord, and his staff. May I inform you that those are symbols of his identity and his authority. Back to Genesis 38, we... Bring it to a conclusion, starting in verse 24, and it came to pass about three months after that, Judah was told, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has played the harlot. Furthermore, she is with child by harlotry. So Judah said, bring her out and let her be burned. And when she was brought out, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, by the man of whom these belong, I'm with child. And she said, please determine whose these are, the signet, the cord, and the staff. So Judah acknowledged them and said, she's been more righteous than I because I did not give her to Sheila, my son. And he never knew her again. Now it came to pass at the time for giving birth that behold, twins were in her womb. So it was when she was giving birth, that the one put out his hand and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand saying, this one came out first, but then it drew it back in his hand and the brother came out unexpectedly. And she said, how'd you break through this breach upon you, therefore his name is called Perez. 
Afterward, his brother came out who had the scarlet thread on his hand. His name was called Zerah. Your attention, please. Let me say it. My third point. The pursuit for more can end with less outside of God's economy. Well, how do you think it is? They, they say, hey, Tamar, your daughter-in-law is a harlot, man. She's pregnant. You need, get her out here and burn her. You've heard me say this one before, and I'll say it again. My sin on me looks like it needs to be, get, be forgiven. My sin on you looks like it needs to be judged. You ever notice that about us? I can struggle with some. Oh, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm just flesh. You understand. On you? How dare you do that? Oh, how disgusting. You come to church, you holding a Bible right now? And you use those hands to do that? I can't believe, how disgusting. What is that about us? So naturally, he looks on and he says, burn her, she's a sinner. And then suddenly, she sends word. Um, can you tell me whose these are? <laughs> now, the resources, the ring, the cord, the signet thing and the uh, staff. He has given him exchange. When he realizes it's her, he says, you know what? I have sinned. I'll not go in her anymore. And now, leaving Genesis chapter 38, turn with me quickly, Matthew chapter 1, and draw your attention to verse 3. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 3. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. You see that? Then come all the way down to verse 16. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. I, I hope when you read that for the very first time, what happens to you, same thing happened to me. First time I, I read that, little hairs on my arms started coming. It's like, ah. We got to. Father-in-law, daughter-in-law, a relationship. And here's what, my, here's what my father, my father, my heavenly father says. He looks at it, he goes, I can redeem that. I can fix that. I'll do something with that. Here's what I'll, oh, 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 watch this. And through that family of faith, grandfather, grandmother, grandfather, grandmother, grandfather, mother. Okay, it's the savior of the world. Wow, that is amazing grace. Amen. Chongchida, everyone, are you ready? This is the most powerful. 선교 방법은 방송 선교에 있습니다. 사랑하는 성도 여러분, 한 통의 후원 전화 C 채널의 큰 힘이 되어 주실 것을 믿습니다. C 채널은 혼탁한 세상을 밝히는 빛과 소금이 될 것입니다. ARS 후원 전화 060 80 